Arushan Abbas is the founder of Campaign for Uyghurs and one of the world's foremost advocates for the ethnic Muslim minority. She says as many as three million Uyghurs are imprisoned in Chinese detention camps, and this includes some Australian citizens. I caught up with Arushan Abbas yesterday. Rishan Abbas, thank you so much for your time. Can you tell us about how you came to be a Uyghur activist and your background? Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I always uh, uh, wanted to do something for my people, and when I realized that uh, the Uyghurs are being treated as a secondary citizens in our own homeland, um, and also being discriminated against the, the Uyghur people just because of our ethnic and the uh, cultural background. I have been uh, working as a the activist. Um, I got involved with a couple uh, pro-democracy demonstrations during the 80s when I was at the university. But ever since I came to the United States, I have been actively involved in advocating for Uyghur people. In the 80s, when you were an activist in university, uh, was before a lot of these terror attacks that the Chinese government used as, as an excuse to crack down on Xinjiang and uh, the surrounding areas, do you think it was bad already at that point? Um, when I was growing up, actually, the Chinese government used every opportunity to suppress Uyghur people under different labels. Uh, during the 50s, it was uh, nationalists. During the 60s, Great Cultural Revolution, they labeled Uyghurs as counter-revolutionaries. And my father and my grandfather were victims of that. And then after that, they used the separatists as a label. Right after 9-11 tragedy, the Chinese government using war on terror effectively and the, uh, using uh, the religion as uh, uh, the pretext to uh, crack down on the Uyghurs. So uh, back uh, when I was at the university back in the 80s, um, it was not uh, like now, it was not about the religion. It was just the, any kind of um, rights that you demand. Uh, they don't like any kind of opposition voices. But uh, I, I call it those are the, the golden years of China because shortly after China opened up to the Western uh, democratic uh, countries with diplomatic relationships, for about 10 to 15 years, we had little bit of uh, freedom and the democracy to exercise. So what did it look like when the government started cracking down? What, what freedoms were they taking away from the Uyghur Chinese? Um, Uyghurs, actually. Um, the Uyghurs are um, uh, completely different than Chinese. Uh, ethnically and the culturally, the Uyghurs are Turkic people. Um, it's still part of China, though. Yeah, it's part of China, but um, uh, calling the, the Chinese Muslims or Uyghur Chinese is a little bit mislead because um, there are Han, like and there are Hui um, Muslims also. They are being called uh, Chinese Muslims because they speak Chinese, they look like Chinese. Mm. Uh, but the, the Uyghurs, uh, we like to be called just the Uyghurs. Okay. <laughs> um, when they use the, the religion to crack down on the Uyghurs now, it's uh, the entire population of the Uyghurs being targeted after the Belt and Road Initiative uh, that Xi Jinping uh, put on the, uh, 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 had the, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, the plan that Xi Jinping had for the world, his signature plan, um, put our homeland in the epicenter of his plan as Xinjiang, uh, we call it East Turkestan, is gateway to uh, Central Asia and the Africa and the North, uh, and the uh, some part of the Europe. What they did was at the beginning they s implemented um, uh, punishment at the spot policy. So any Uyghur can get attacked uh, or shoot to kill or Uyghur homes can be raided in by any kind of armed forces without uh, they are being obligated to respecting any kind of rules or laws. Uh, with that, the, the victims' families started to have some sort of uh, protests or some sort of um, uh, resist resistance, but any kind of resentment characterized as Islamic terrorism. Under that pretext, 
Now they are attacking the entire uh, the Uyghur population, and then punishment has been cultural and the collective. Uh, three million Uyghur people are in the concentration camps right now. And also, uh, regular people living daily lives like you and me, uh, facing the police brutalities and the mass surveillance of police state. Um, everybody is being targeted. Um, their homes are, uh, every Uyghur homes are put the QR scanning codes and the uh, uh, facial recognition software, iris scanning systems everywhere. 1.1 uh, Chinese officials, Han Chinese officials, this was reported in Chinese media, deployed to Uyghur homes to live with them and sleep with them to monitor their daily lives and supervise them. This was reported in Chinese media and picked up by Associated Press. Um, when you imagine, you know, like, uh, why these people are being treated like that? Mm. Why three million Uyghurs are in the concentration camps? Basically, according to the Chinese government right now, being Uyghur, being Muslim, is being treated as a crime. Um, so what impact has your activism had on your family? Um, six days after I spoke publicly for the first time in uh, September 5th, 2018, my sister and my aunt, uh, they both got abducted same day. Few months later, my aunt was being released, but uh, I have no information of my sister. They live about 1,400 kilometers away from each other. My sister lived in Urumqi, and my aunt lived in Atush, a town nearby Kashgar. Um, as a retaliation for my activism in America, uh, under my constitutional rights, but uh, my sister became a victim now. Um, my story is not unique because most of the Uyghur activists in diaspora are facing similar uh, retaliation by the Chinese government. Uh, basically, the Chinese government is uh, threatening us with our family members and the, giving us the heartbreaking um, choice of either you stay quiet about this atrocity so the world uh, community will not find out what's happening or your loved ones, your family members will pay the consequences. So did you consider that when you were speaking out? Were you scared about the impact on your family or did you just feel compelled that you needed to do it? No, I always worried for my family, uh, especially my sister. She was, uh, she is uh, one of the only family members I had left back home. So I worried for her, um, but she is a retired medical doctor, speaks fluent Chinese. She is a very quiet, uh, introversal person and never spoke out about anything. So I thought, you know, her being law-binding citizen of China, mm. she would be safe. And just to protect her, I tried to um, not to speak to her. I have not contacted her since uh, summer of 2017 after the situation deteriorated there. Just to protect my sister, I did not have any kind of communications with her, yet still I couldn't protect her. Mm. But if I am afraid of Chinese retaliation and another person do the same, who's going to speak up for this uh, brutality? Because right now what's happening to our home, uh, to our people in our homeland, it's a crimes against humanity and the the China's uh, war against the uh, f basic freedom of mankind. Um, what China's doing, they're undermining the rule of law and the putting people in arbitrary detention and the treating the regular people living in the daily lives as the criminals or putting them under the complete surveillance. This is undermining the Western democracy. Mm. And the, basically China's making this as something normal, um, unless if we started to uh, expose this and let the world population, world, world community know, um, that's the plan China has for the future of the world community. And I don't want to see that happen. 
I don't want this world that we are leaving behind for our kids and for our children and grandchildren is going to be the same as who the, the, the uh, same as the Uyghurs are living today. I don't want that the world community's future is the Uyghurs today. Rushan, Rushan Abbas, thank you so much for your time.